Hello, this is Bernard Lee, and I'm very honored and happy to be talking about my latest book, Poker Satellite Success. Turn affordable buy-ins into shots at winning millions of dollars. This is a book that everyone can learn from, especially if you are wanting to play in that dream event that just might not be financially reachable, but you could potentially take a shot at that event if you are able to win your seat via a satellite, whether that is a preliminary event or maybe even the WSOP main event. This book came out of a, a chapter in Jonathan Little's No Limit Hold'em, Excelling at No Limit Hold'em. He asked me to write a section in that book for him, and I was very honored and suggested to write a chapter on satellites. I had been doing several uh, seminars over the years, uh, specifically on the Run Good Poker Series and also at the WSOP circuit, and specifically the satellite topic was very popular. So I asked him if I could write about that chapter. Well, it was one of the most well-received chapters in the book. Numerous people came up to me over the years asking me to sign the copy of the book and, and talk about it. And so DMB Publishing uh, came up to me during uh, the World Series one summer and asked me, would I be interested in writing an entire book on the topic? And I was very interested as I had left some topics out or some chapters out because obviously... You can't write a huge chapter for Jonathan's book, and these additional words and additional topics could be included in a book. So we set out to write the book. It was uh, planned on being released in the summer of 2020 at the World Series of Poker, but of course our world changed with the COVID-19 pandemic. But we are moving forward, and it is being released here in 2021, and Looking forward to uh, the comments and all of the kind words that I have already received about the book. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the specifics and some of the insights in the book itself. So as you can see here, this is the first page of the table of contents. And one of the people who is really instrumental in the history of the satellite is the 2003 World Series main event champion. Chris Moneymaker. He has become a really good friend, a, a very, very popular guest on my radio show, really the guest who's been on my show the most over now in 2021 will be the 14th year of the Bernard Lee Poker Show. And he was very kind to write the forward to my book, Poker Satellite Success. Uh, in addition to an introduction, we talk a little bit about the history of the satellite, where Eric Drake, who was the WSMP tournament director, created and uh, created the satellite. Then also in 1983, Tom McAvoy became the first player ever to qualify for the WSOP main event via satellite and win it. And of course, the 2003 World Series main event champion, Chris Moneymaker, he turned an $86 satellite on PokerStars into $2.5 million and really poker immortality as the 2003 World Series main event champion and creating a poker boom that we are uh, still living and of course called the moneymaker effect. Well, then I uh, talk about in chapter one important terms and concepts that will be used later on and throughout this book, such as ranging from fold equity all the way to uh, big blind ante and talking about player positions and also the odds of hands that you have versus your opponent's hands. But one of the topics that's uh, very interesting and also a formula which are one of, of a few formulas I put in this book is how to calculate the number of entries needed for one main event seat. In chapter two, we start our discussion about satellite strategy. But what we talk about here is even the prior to the start of the event. We're not talking about actually playing or about showing up and now sitting down, getting checked in and before the event. And wouldn't it be important for you to know 
did somebody already have a seat? Is somebody really anxious and, and really wanting to get a seat and can't play in the main event because they don't have the funds and the satellites the only way to do that? Well, I talk about how you can observe and listen to the players prior to gain some of that information. Also, another important formula that I put down is how to calculate the ending blind level for the satellite. Some people think that the satellite will end earlier and maybe stop playing and slow down. But if you know what blind level the satellite will end, it'll be very important information for you to know that other people may not know. When we go to page two of the table of contents, this is really the meat of satellite strategy. Chapters 3 through 6, they talk about all the levels of a satellite. The early, middle, late, and then of course the all-important on the bubble. So this is what a satellite is. And as we talked about, the most important thing in a satellite, and I say this prior to chapter 1, is survival. Satellite play is very different than tournament play because in a tournament, you want to gain as many chips as possible and, of course, not only break the bubble and make the money, but end up winning. In a satellite, it doesn't matter if you're the chip leader or if you have only one chip when the bubble is broken, you all get the same prize, that seat, into whichever event you're playing for, often a main event. So... Talking about Chapter 3, the early levels, we talk about how to play premium hands, whether to re-enter or not, and then identifying tells that can be used later on in the satellite. Chapter 4 is the middle levels, and we introduce big, medium, and short stacks. And why is because obviously in the early levels, you all start out about the same chip stack. You all start with the same number of chips, and you're pretty much around the same. But the middle levels is where the separation begins. We also talk about the short stack strategy that I have developed here for satellites. And you really could use this in other tournaments as well, just doing a little bit of manipulating of some of the uh, opportunities that you have. And not only that, but when to potentially push all in with any two cards. Chapter 5, we'll talk about the late levels. Again, the big, medium, and short stacks. But I also throw in another formula where you can calculate if you have enough chips to earn a seat. I just mentioned that in a tournament, it would be a little different. Late levels, uh, prior to the bubble or on the bubble, the big stacks, they really want to take advantage of that big stack and put pressure on the short stacks so that they can really build up their chips on the bubble. So when the bubble is broken, they can now really proceed forward and try to get to that final table and the ultimate win. But in a satellite, it doesn't matter. If you have enough chips to earn a seat, why are you playing additional hands just to put yourself at risk? So a very different concept. And this formula allows you to understand, do I have enough chips that I literally don't have to play another hand? And then finally, in this middle section of the book of chapter 6, we talk about on the bubble. We talk about the big, medium, and small stacks and introduce the super short stack because it is critical that you figure out how you want to play when you are on the bubble. So that's really how you play the satellite. That's the middle sections of this book but there are four chapters at the end that really uh, make this book a little unique and in all honesty that you'll really want to read as you enter a satellite first chapter seven is a section that many people probably don't talk about deals in satellites there are many players out there that don't realize that deals can be made in satellites. And I have played in a number of events where deals are introduced, discussed, rejected, and then also finalized. Uh, many different options, many different ways, and I give you a lot of different ways to think about deals in satellites so that you can potentially be creative and not put yourself at risk of walking away on the bubble with nothing. Chapter 8 talks about other satellite scenarios that you should consider. 
you know, satellite progressions, on-light satellites. But one of the biggest things is a concept that you would never even consider really in a normal tournament. But in a satellite, in a specific situation, folding aces pre-flop is something you should consider. And I've written uh, a, a chapter I wrote about this on ESPN.com previously and also I witnessed it live firsthand at a WSOP circuit in Atlantic City for a $5,000 main event seat. You'll definitely want to read that section and understand why folding aces preflop is definitely something that is a consideration in a satellite setting. Now, chapters 9 and 10, really, these are the chapters that I actually wrote first when I was asked to write this book. These were the chapters that I really wish I could have incorporated into Jonathan Little's book, but just didn't have the room. Chapter 9 is practice examples using those formulas that we talked about. Do you have enough chips to earn a seed? Uh, how many entries are needed for that one main event uh, seat? So that is practice examples. But then chapter 10 are real life scenarios. Things that I went through in eight different satellites. Some of them didn't turn out so well. So what I do is I describe the situation. And then at the end I say, what would you do? And then I leave it blank and let you turn the page because I let you think about it. Now I let you turn the page and tell you what happened. And then there's a section of what I learned from it. Because sometimes I learned that I made the mistake, like for example, one of the, the examples, I lost a $10,000 WPT main event seat because we couldn't make a deal. And we could have made a deal if I was a little more creative. I may have given up a, a, some value, maybe $500 or so, but instead I ended up walking away with nothing. And so these are real life scenarios. What could you do? I talk about some of the key concepts in front of all of them. And then you will at least have that extra experience without risking anything because you didn't play in the event itself prior to you going to play some satellites. I have a summary and then also a glossary of poker terms in this book as well. So I hope you enjoyed kind of my description of my book, uh, Poker Satellite Success. I hope you go out and get it. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it really helps you get into that dream tournament of yours. If you get the book and you see me out there on the poker circuit, please don't hesitate to come up to me. I'd love to sign it for you. I'd love to talk with you about it. I hope you enjoy my latest book, Poker Satellite Success from DNB Poker, and I wish you all the luck on the felt. Thank you, everybody. Bernard Lee here for Poker Satellite Success.